Sixty Helen, can I get some water in here or something? Yeah, no problem. Right away. Okay. No, we need it now. Uh huh. Okay, stand by. Cookie, can I have some names, please? Yeah, I got it. No, now. No, that's okay. Two will do. Okay. Um. Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our show. Why don't you tell me how many people are going to be playing this game? Just okay. the one of me. So you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. Sorry. Just type your name in, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Set up over here. I just need a ranch. I know what I meant. For we get okay. You want to do a seven-question game, or you want twenty-one? All right, all right. That's right. what you want. Your call. Thirty seconds. Okay, now your buzzer is the letter B. B as in baseball strike. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for more. Nice. Welcome back for more. Let's play. You don't know Jack. Uh, okay. When you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're gonna lose cash, alright? Okay, I need everybody to be quiet. You need to be quiet now. Okay, lose the desktop. Cue graphics. Sun effects on deck. Okay, go to black. Let's go. Barking Billies, where your pet fat is doggone. here okay you ready to fly time for blast off okay pick a category Hanna Barbology the category Hanna Barbology and we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question okay hang tight put your fingers on your buzzers here's the question Mr. Flintstone is to Mr. Slate as Mr. Jetson is to whom? Mr. Spacely, Mr. Sprockets, Mr. Rubble, or Mr. Skyrockets? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Spacely. Mr. Spacely of Spacely Sprockets. <laughs> Mr. Spacely is George's boss, Mr. Slate is Fred's boss. Important information you can use. How about it? Hit me with do you want to be insulted? Yes. Yes, I do. What do you do? It's question number two. The category is... Psst, do you want to be insulted? This question's going to be worth $2,001 bills. Hang on tight, because here we go. Let's say we're friends, and let's say that I call you cold, wet, and spineless. Now, let's say that I wasn't being rude. I was just telling you the truth. What animal are you? A Siamese fighting fish, an egret, a lobster, or an alligator? I don't think lobsters have spines. If you're a lobster, you're cold-blooded, spend a lot of time in water, and you have no spine. But with some lemon and butter, you're quite a dish. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Projectile comedy. Question three. The category behind this question is projectile comedy. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Let's suppose the citizens of Peoria, Illinois, build a rocket and fill it with people who are guilty of publicly uttering the cliche, but will it play in Peoria? Now, the plan is to send the rocket straight into the sun. When should the citizens of Peoria launch their rocket if they want to wait until the Earth is closest to the sun? January 3rd, September 23rd, March 21st, or July 4th? It's closest to the sun in the winter, isn't it? January 3rd, and that is generally the day when the Earth is closest to the sun. And interestingly enough, it's also National Skin Cancer Day. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, pick a category. Next time we're a cup. Yeah, there we go. To All right, let's see what we're too. doing here. Next time, we're a cup, Jocko. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. You know, it happens every once in a while at a baseball game. Some unfortunate guy gets hit with a ball in a very sensitive spot. Because of its origin, which of these nouns is the most accurate one to use in a play-by-play -play call describing the mishap? Pow! Right in the cashews! Oh, we took a high hard one in the peaches. Oh, you hate to see a guy catch one in the eggs. Or, oh, we got plunked right in the avocados! I don't know this one. Let's go with the eggs. Um, a guy with eggs may not be a guy, you know what I'm saying? 
Here's what you should have guessed. Unless they were just kind of... Yeah, I don't know. Avocado. It comes from the Aztec word for testicle. I bet okay. some of you guys will be crossing your legs next time you see a bowl of guacamole, huh? How about it? Hit me with a category. Hero for the 90s. The name of this category is a hero for the 90s. The amount on the table is three grand. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. All right, let's say DC Comics proudly introduced a new superhero called Inertia Man. Of the following, which superhero power would you expect he'd be lacking? Ability to remain still even when pushed, ability to move in the same direction for hours, ability to resist even needed change, or ability to go so slowly you barely notice. Hey, he wouldn't have melt I rocks. Think not. In case what? you're curious about the correct answer, huh. even Inertia Man can't keep still when pushed. I wonder body where they came with it. tends to remain at rest until acted upon by an outside yeah, force. And a body in motion, what do you like to know, sicko? But melt rocks. Right, Never so mind. Me, we need a category. Uh oh, best punch fits Ooh, fine whore. It's time for a Snickerfish restaurant. This gibberish questions category is blind dates and animal byproducts. The opening value is five thousand dollars. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Now, you know there's no screwing your neighbor in this kind of a question. You ready to untangle some gibberish? Let's do it. What does this rhyme with? Say, bud, Jan is lard. You mind? Hit mm. number one, it's what a single person might say. I have no idea. It's what a single person might say about looking for Mr. Right. It's about how difficult it is to find a special guy. I'm drawing a blank here. I can't... I don't know. I tell you, honey, I've Too been on the, the dating morning. scene for years, and most of these men are jerks. A good Let man me is tell okay. you something. Say, Bud Jan is lied you mine. Yeah. Actually, good contestants are also rather scarce. Indeed they are. Okay, pick a category. Zabba dooba dabbin, question seven. Next up, the periodic table and the house of Hanover. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. If King George III and other rulers were really made of noble stuff, which gas might they pass? Fluorine, oxygen, hydrogen, or neon? Neon. One of Easy the six one, noble gases on the periodic table, but I tell you, I think passing a neon be pretty painful, even the small sports coupe. Hello. Yeah, yeah, that that would hurt. Just a little. How about it? Hit me with a category. Yeah, I want to hold your coat. Beatles reference here. Wait, wait, elevate, hibernate, vegetate, eh? Here's the category. I want to hold your comb. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's going to be worth a grand. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which hairstyle named for a household cleaning tool did the Beatles make famous? The rag shag, the mop top, the broom groom, or the toilet brush cut? Pretty sure they were the mop top. The mop top. Also known as the Mo from the Three Stooges cut. Yep. Or the Gohan in later right, years. Hit me. We need a category. Primary school foot down. Why not? It's number nine. This one's gonna be primary school put downs. <clears throat> okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth three thousand bucks. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which of the following rays would have gotten the nickname Stubby for being the shortest in gym class? Ultraviolet, X-ray, visible light, or radio? Which one is the shortest? Uh, couldn't remember. And here's the right answer. It's got the shortest wavelength. Of course, it's not the size of your ray that counts. It's the motion of your wave. That or ultraviolet. You know I couldn't. Uh, How about it? Hit me with the category. Greg Brady, nuclear physicist. That should scare everyone to death. 
The category, Greg Brady, nuclear physicist. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Imagine a never-released Brady Bunch episode on which Greg realizes that his ideal mate would be a cross between Marsha and Carol. If he goes nuts and tries to literally combine the two women, what scientific process could best describe what he's doing? Convection, fusion, fission, or inflation? Fusion. When two nuclei are combined, it's called... Fusing! Fusion. And when Marsha and Carol are combined, you get Meryl or Captain Stubing. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. <laughs> now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. Okay, pick a category. Chronology and motion sickness. And now, 11. The category is chronology and motion sickness. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Imagine you and a friend are paddling a canoe on an exciting whitewater river trip. A big rock is directly ahead at 12 o'clock and a fallen tree at 10 o'clock. Suddenly, your friend vomits all over his shirt. If you're in the bow and he's in the stern, where is the vomit in relation to you? 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, or 7.45? Bow, stern. The bow's in the front facing 12 o'clock, so your friend yeah. and his shirt are in the stern at 6 o'clock. And for your sake, I hope there's a strong headwind because the stench of vomit doesn't care what time it is. True. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Your sister has the best laid plans. And this one is not going to be easy, $6,000. All right, now listen carefully. It's 1947. You're Japan. Your little sister is Europe. Your dad is the good old USA. Both you and your sister ask dad for money, but dad gives it to little sis Europe. Assuming it's not just that dad likes your sister better, what plan was he using to determine who gets the money? The New Deal, Jay's Treaty, the Marshall Plan, or the Truman Plan? I have no idea. I mean, I know it's not the new deal, but I can't remember which one was the... Should have picked this. <laughs> the Marshall Plan, designed to pump up the European economy after WW2, and perhaps ultimately to blame for Euro Disney. Eh, well, How about it? Hit me with there's the no such thing as a stupid question until there is. The category behind this question is, there's no such thing as a stupid question. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, we're coming at you, heads up. How many rings are in the three ring binder? The remainder of six divided by two, two, half a circle's radius with a diameter of six or the square root of nine. Square root of nine. Why, you cipher better than Jethro Bodine. And he done graduated the sixth grade. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Hazel and Magic Wood. 14! The name of this category is Hazel and Magic Wood. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. If TV's wacky maid Hazel actually had the powers attributed to Hazelwood, what talent would she have? The ability to live forever, the ability to find water underground, the ability to resist fire, or the ability to hit a golf ball 500 yards? That is what they use for dowsing rods, isn't it? The ability to find H2O. Yeah, divining rods were supposedly made out of hazelwood. Of course, you know, the newer models are made out of fiberglass. Okay, pick a category. Hey, Mr. Science and Alcohol Consumption. This one's gonna be Mr. Science and Alcohol Consumption. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. All right, imagine this. Maybe this won't take that much imagination for you. You wake up one day on the side of a highway hung over from a long night of partying. As a blinding headache pounds in your head, you notice that as people honk at you, the horns sound higher pitched as they approach you and lower pitched as they move away. What is this an example of? That was a long law, the Doppler way. effect, the rhythm method, or delirium tremens. Long way to go to get to that question. You remember it from Science 101. The Doppler effect. How about it? Hit me with the category. Honest, Mom, it's just a fantasy. Ha! <laughs>
Here's the category. Honest, Mom, it's just a fantasy. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Imagine, if you will, this episode of Fantasy Island. A young woman tells Mr. Rourke that her fantasy is to murder her mother and marry her father. Tattoo, a student of Freud, explains to Mr. Rourke that this woman wants which kind of fantasy? A cesarean fantasy, an electro fantasy, a flying fantasy, or an Oedipal fantasy? Similar to Oedipal fantasy. Let's try it. An Oedipal fantasy? Uh, maybe nope, if she were a he. If it's the opposite, okay. So what is the opposite of Oedipal fantasy? An Electra. Electra fantasy. Electra, one of the characters from Greek mythology, decided to kill her mother, who had already killed Electra's father. And you thought your family was dysfunctional. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. Things that make you sweat. Uh-oh! Another West one. Truck nine more. Make up for the one I missed earlier. It's time for a Tinker Lake Test Drive. Here's your gibberish category. Things that make you sweat. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Remember, you can't screw on a gibberish question. You ready? Let's see if you can untangle this one. What does this rhyme with? Fits not, duh. Eat pits the stupidity. Okay, let's see yeah, there you know. we go. Your and it's not the heat, it's the humidity. I can definitely tell it's human because you got the frizzies on that question. And no, I don't know what that means either. I'm just reading off my teleprompter here, folks. <laughs> Okay, pick a category. I think I want to hurl. Yeah. Next up, I think I'm gonna hurl. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Well, we all love those little tasty treats like ice cream, marshmallows, and candies, but one ingredient common to all these delicious delights is gelatin. Mm-mm. Which of the following is not often used in gelatin production? Animal saliva, animal hides, animal bones, or animal connective tissue? We'll see the heights. Hey kids, who wants dessert? No. You know what you could have You could have picked this. Uh, Animal yeah. saliva. There's always room for bones, hides, and tissue in gelatin. But no animal saliva, unless you piss off the waiter. How about it? Hit me with the category. Parts is parts. The category is parts is parts. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. A small dried up body part resembling a seahorse came up for auction at Christie's in 1977. What was it? Napoleon's penis, Galileo's finger, Van Gogh's ear, or Marie Antoinette's uterus? Huh. I don't know which one came up for auction. Now the correct answer is... Napoleon's penis, how someone got his bone apart from the rest of them is unknown. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Your ABCs, why not? All right, let's see what we're doing here. Your ABCs and TNA. It's going to be worth $4,000. Okay, for this next question, I want you to imagine this. One of the Baywatch babes goes shopping on Rodeo Drive looking for a diphthong. A clerk explains to her that a diphthong is not a swimsuit for stupid people. It's German for work boots, the tongue depressor at the doctor's office, a phrase made from two opposite words, or a type of vowel sound. I'm pretty sure that's a sound. Specifically, it's a vowel sound that changes to another vowel sound within one syllable. As in, boy, it must have taken a lot of toil to be that good an actress. Okay, Stop or I'll shoot. Enter the attack. If you see two words together and they form a match, buzz in. $2,000 will be yours if you're right, but each time you're wrong, 2000 shall be taken away. But be not fooled. Remember the blue. 
It won't be a match unless it fits this clue. Stop, or I'll shoot. Okay, this is it, final round. Let's see what you can do. Begin Come the on, attack. monitor. Squid shoot ink. Dragon fire. Fire. Although a dragon shooting sharks would be awesome. Horned toad. I think they shoot blood, but I already missed that, didn't I? Yes, I did. Llama spit. Gunk, stink, odor, smelly spray, something like that. Archer fish shoots water. Horn toad, blood. I'm pretty sure they shoot blood to ward off things. Oh, all right, way to crank them out. Let's see what it did to your score. That's the game. All right, nice going. I think you found your niche. Not the worthless trivia is going to help you find a decent job or anything, but who knows? But I'll tell you what I do know. You don't know Jack. Hey, Cookie, what's the, uh, what's the deal with the contestants now? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just got to let me know, all right? Okay, see everyone back tomorrow for one more game of You Don't Know Jack Volume 1 XL. And, and, and hopefully, I will hit the fiber optic it, field trip. If not, I'll have to try again in Volume 2. Take care, folks. Enjoy the commercials. You guys switch coffee or something? This tastes great. It's so rich and strangely comforting. Excuse me, sir. Huh? Where the hell'd you... Hey... Aren't you that trivia game show guy? It's not the coffee. It's the creamer. Mama's Pride Human Breast Milk Creamer. I'm drinking human breast milk? That's right. It's richer, sweeter, and more nutritious. Human breast milk? Huh. Makes sense. Not just any breast milk. Mama's Pride Human Breast Milk. Baby yourself with Mama's Pride. Hi. My name is Tammy. And I have a wart on my lip. I know you want to touch it and run your finger along its hairy surface. I wish you were here rubbing salve on it right now. And if you're very, very good, I'll let you rub ointment on my other moles and boils. Ooh, I can't wait. Call me, they're throbbing. Call 976-WART, $10 per minute. Hey guys, when you go to the store, are you sick of seeing rows and rows of little pink packages labeled just for women? It used to be a man's world. What the hell happened? Man Packs, feminine hygiene products made just for men. Constructed from an indestructible space age polymer, Man Packs products are perfect for the man on the go. And they only come in one color, camouflage. Look for Man Packs products anywhere you buy beer. Man Packs puts the men back in menstruation. Period. Uh, hey Susie, what are you doing Saturday night? You want to go driving with me? Sorry, Jimmy, but there won't be enough room in the car for you, me, and your zip. <laughs> hey, Bubby. Jimmy. Hey, that chin needs a road ride. What'd you do? Wash your face with a glove, please. <laughs> This looks like a job for new Spackney. Spackney? What gives? Spackney! It's spackle for your acne. Flesh colored mortar that you apply with our new neon spatulators. It's waterproof, windproof, flame retardant, and scuff resistant. Spackney, it'll smooth you out. Spackney, works better than grout. Spackney, say adios to your acne. Also available, back knee for your stubborn back acne. And for those really hard to reach places, try new crack knee. <laughs> <laughs>